All right, I told you I'd find something. Boom, 400 needs a radiator. I don't know if you can tell it. Maybe you can see there's just a little bit of leakage right there. It's got a pinhole. Let's come around this side. Yeah, coming out of the radiator there, because Toyota runs a red antifreeze. I don't think you have to, but that's what we use. But let's get that swapped out. Get this engine or this shroud off the front. It's got these little tabs. They're just push tabs. I'll just sharpen that so it'd be easier. Good shown there. Sharpen my little flathead screwdriver. Oh, I broke that one. I keep extras just for that reason. Some of these will break. They're brittle. All three of these were fine. Keep up with them. And uh, you're going to take them off here, 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 there. And then you have one here, one here. And I may have to remove this part as well. I can't remember. No, it doesn't come off. But let's get that out of the way. A minute since I've done one of these radiators. But I know we're going to have to get our degas tank. This fan shroud. Well, we can probably just loosen the fan shroud and move around it. And then, I'm not sure that you can see, but there are two 10 millimeter bolts, I believe, holding that in on this side and two on the other. First things first though, we're going under. And we're gonna take these uh, skid plates off. They should be 12 millimeter, I believe take them off and get it out the way you don't have to but you're gonna make a mess but you can see you see that little let's see, right there my finger is that's that pitcock and it will drain i'm just gonna drain directly onto the skid plate if i do that so let's get the skid plate out of the way and then we'll drain this radiator this engine's still hot so we're not gonna do this just yet <laughs> done that before well i didn't know what i was doing and uh, it didn't go well oh have you a little short bucket i like my short bucket and you find it that pit cock i'm just going to turn it lefty loosey not all of it's going to come out um, until I can uh, open that top cap, but uh, that'll get you going. Drain all your coolant, and then we'll go from there. All right, so first thing, we're going to get this, this fan shroud and, and tank off. Uh, if you notice this bolt to the tank, to your overflow tank here does go into the radiator, so we have to undo this one this bolt as well they're both 10 millimeter and my cats are back also upper radiator hose this one's a spring clamp for me so we'll spring it pull it back pop it off other side fan shroud is held by this 10 millimeter bolt and there's one more somewhere off in the abyss down there, you'll have to get to it from the bottom. Uh, but there's one more 10 millimeter bolt down there. Then you'll notice your transmission coolant lines here and here. Uh, spring loaded uh, clamps. That just does not feel good. I'm gonna put some light on it and see what I'm looking at. Okay, it's got a it's got a sheath on it on this one that's why it felt weird uh spring and it may have a uh they may actually screw in after the spring i can't remember but these will pop off these just go to your transmission and then you've got your lower radiator hose here and it's also got a spring clamp on it at the bottom uh undo all three of these and then once that's done we'll be moving on to this is the bolt that's going to hold in the radiator to your uh, to your truck here. One bolt here. Mm, hard to see, but there's another one at the bottom. If you will, 
you see what you may have is that bolt is a uh, I believe it's 12 millimeter okay let's look down here because it's gonna be important for you to be able to reach it do you see let's see if I can get this to go through there I can't let's see off in off in here and it's hard to see but in that hole there is the other uh, bolt head for the bottom of the radiator and what you're gonna have to do is either take a ratchet with an extension and get it on that bolt head on this side that would be preferable if you have an error or power ratchet it's even better but this side is 12 millimeter and your nut on the other side for both of these this one and the reciprocating one on the bottom is a 13 millimeter same thing here see that bolt here it goes through to the other side here so 13 millimeter same thing as you go through at the bottom in that hole i can't reach in there let's see if i can get low enough so you can see there it is you see that bolt head there you go that's the one that the 12 millimeter has to get on that side so if you go to one of these places and they want to charge you eight hundred dollars to change your radiator um you can tell them no i'll take a 12 millimeter 13 millimeter and a little bit of my time a new radiator and some new fluid and do it myself um hey if you're on one of those shops and you don't like what i'm saying stop charging people eight hundred dollars to change the radiator i understand it's got a couple of hours work you do not have to charge eight hundred dollars for that so one of the local shops wanted to charge one of my customers that and i told them no come see me and we'll make sure it happens a lot cheaper but this video will let you know how to change that yourself so let's get to moving those bolts out Mm, now you see why I just named a spring clamp, but I got them all loose. One and number two, and then the big one at the bottom, the radiator hose, it's off as well. So one, two, and three are loose, spring clamps and all. Now we can work on these bolts. There's one, two at the bottom. Three and four on the other side. And I was wrong on this fan shroud. It kind of just slips down on the bottom. It just kind of kind of sits down in there. There's a uh trying to see how it does it because you don't have any bolts at the bottom. There you go. Now you can't see it. It's down there. There's a clip on the side of that fan shroud. You see it? And it sits down. Yeah, it sits down inside that clip down there on the side of the radiator. And then your bolt at the top holds it in. All right, coming in from the front, 12 millimeter. I just start twisting on this bolt and that nut stays in place. So the bolt will come right out on the tops. And then the one, that'll be the true tail. Is this one? Let's see if I can get on it. Can't get that. Can't get that one in there. Let me get a different socket. See if it works. If it works. Can't laugh at me. And oh, we're on. Let's see what happens. Let's see if you can watch from this side. I doubt it. Maybe you can see. Let's 
Boom. You will not need, or at least I did not need the wrench on the back. So, 12 millimeter, boom. One, two, three, four. And the radiator is going to come right out. Yeah. It'll be a little bit sideways, but you can see what's going on anyway. That out of the way. All right. Oh, here's whoop, ink tight. Ink tight. Stop at it. Stop dripping. All right. Now you can drip. And catch all the antifreeze you can. I made a little mess. I'm gonna rinse it down so my kids' kitty cats don't die. I don't know if they'll drink it or not, but whatever. My kids would be really mad if that happened. But catch all of it, dispose of it properly. But uh, these, these little grommets, there we go. They're gonna come out. All these on all four where the bolts went in. And they're going to go into your new radiator. You see this one? It's the only one with a little catch. And it's on the top side. I'll leave that right there. There you go. You see that little hole? It will catch it in there. That way, there may be, let's see, where is it? Yeah, it's right there. It'll catch in that little hole. And then you can, uh, it'll rest your radiator without having to uh, worry about it falling kind of helps keep it in place as you put it back together okay so, we're going to reverse this process now we're going to put those grommets into the new one we're going to slip it back down in there we're going to put those four bolts back through one two three and four and then we're going to slip these transmission coolant lines back on the lower radiator hose back on top radiator hose back on hook this in off for our overflow or degas tank whatever you want to call it and then your three 10 millimeter bolts that hold the shroud in place. And then you're going to top it off. Uh, Toyota takes a red coolant. Um, Ison, Asin, however you say their company name, the, um, that is what Toyota recommends. Um, you can get the red coolant from O'Reilly's or AutoZone or whoever. Um, and you're going to top it back off until it's full. I like to leave the cap off, crank it. Um, and I go lock to lock on the wheels back and forth on the, put a little bit of pressure on it and see if I can get any of the, of the uh, fluid to bubble out um, or any air that may be trapped. But you're gonna let your truck run for a couple minutes. Once it runs for a couple minutes, uh, you should be able to turn the heat on and feel heat. If you cannot feel heat, you do not have enough fluid in your, uh, your coolant reservoir. Um, so you've got some air trapped and you're gonna need to like I said, leave that cap off of the radiator so it doesn't build pressure. Um, and I like to just lock to lock on the wheel, make sure that I'm uh, putting a little strain on it. And uh, usually you can get that air to bubble on out of there. And uh, top it off all the way. Look how nasty, man. Top it off the rest of the way. And once you've got heat going, um, if your radiator's topped off, you got a little bit in your overflow tank up to its uh, minimum level and you've got heat going you know you've got enough coolant so hope this helps somebody out um if you want to see the rest of it um i mean literally it's a reverse of that same process so i didn't figure you guys would want to watch the rest of that watch the rest of what i was gonna do there but uh if you do um <laughs> i guess let me know and i'll do it but i just didn't think you'd want to watch the rest of that all the way through but just reverse that process put it back together and uh hope this saves somebody some money uh, if it does, like, subscribe, share, please. Um, we're starting to get a little traction on the channel, um, and I appreciate that. Appreciate what you guys are doing, and uh, we'll see you next time.